Hello everyone. Welcome to Gamma Classroom. Today I'm going to introduce the video 1.1-2 conductors, insulators, current flow, and electrical circuits. In previous video 1.1-1, we learned what is static electricity. The main points in previous video. All materials are made up of atoms. All atoms contain electrons, protons, and neutrons. Electrons have a negative electrical charge. Protons have a positive electrical charge. Neutrons have no electric charge. Electrons can be dislodged from atoms much easier than protons and neutrons. We know all the material made of atoms. This is atom. In the center, they have protons and neutrons. And in the outside, out, they have two electrons. The electrons travel away along on an orbit like this. The electrons of different type of atoms have different degrees of freedom to move around. Let's look at the periodic table. We know all the elements showing in the table. The yellow color is means the matter. Let's look inside the table. The yellow color is called the matter. This makes the green or gray color. This means metalloids. Metalloids means sometimes in some condition, this material can become a matter. And this gray color, like this one, this color is no matter. It means no matter. With some types of materials, such as metals, the outermost electrons in the atoms are so loosely bound that they chaotically move in the space between the atoms of that material by nothing more than the influence of room temperature heat energy. This is the most popular the metals used for the electrical cables and for electrical using aluminum. Aluminum, the proton number is 13. It's aluminum AL. They have, you see, they have three neighbors. One, two, three. Close by the center, this is the first neighbor. The number has electrons. They have two electrons. The second neighbor, we call it this one. They have the eight electrons. And the outside, the neighbor, they have three electrons. If the neighbor is close by the center, the attraction force is very strong. It's very strong. And the second one is weak than the first one. Also, the third one is weak than the second one. So in the outside, the electrons is the attraction force is weak. So they have the, a lot of the opportunity to move away from the atoms. Atoms. Let's took, take a look at the copper. The number is Cu. They have the four, four neighbors. One, two, three, four. In the first neighbor, they have two electrons. The second one, and eight electrons. 
the third one, the 18, 18 electrons. And in the out, outmost, they have the only one electrons. So this one electron is far away from the center. So the attraction force is weak. Is weak. So the electrons have the very frequent to move away from the atoms. So why the copper is very good, good conduct, conduct because they have only one electrons can more easily move out. The same, let's talk about the silver. The number is AG. They have the 47 electrons. They are five levels is one two three four five the same in the outmost they have only one electron here they have very free and loose because this one is far away from the center the attraction force is very weak so these electrons they can easily to move away to move away because those virtually unbound electrons are free to leave their respective atoms and float around in the space between adjacent atoms they are often called free electrons the out electrons are so weakly bound to matter atoms that they are free to run across the entire metal. Having lost their out electrons, individual metal are more like positive elves in a swarm of alpha communal electrons. It's like this. In the conduct, the material they have not of the atoms here, but this, those atoms have a free electrons, electrons in their atoms. Those electrons move away from the atoms, so create the, like the swarm of delocalized electrons. So they are not of free electrons in between the at atoms so in other types of material such as glass the atoms electrons have very little freedom to move around where external forces such as physical rubbing can force some of those electrons to leave their respective atoms and transfer to the atoms of another material. They do not move between atoms within that material very, very easily. Like we already learned in the previous video, this is a glass rod. This is a silk cloth. When the both rub together, the electrons from the glass rod transfer to the silk cloth. From this part, transfer to this part. So this is the positive, this is negative. But in the glass rod inside, there is no few electrons inside the glass rod this relative mobility of electrons within a material is known as electric conductivity conductivity is determined by the types of atoms in a material the number of protons in each atom's nucleus determining 
its chemical identity and how the atoms are linked together with one another. Materials with high electron mobility, it means in the material there are many free electrons. So we call we called conductors or are called conductors. This one. Well, materials with no electron mobility, few or no free electrons inside the, inside the material, we call or are called insulators. insulators. Here are a few common examples of conductors. They have the silver, we talk about copper, golden, Aluminum, iron, steel, brass, bronze, mercury, graphite, direct, dirty wood, dirty wood. You can see the pictures. This is silver and golden. This is copper. This is aluminum. We use copper and aluminum to make uh, electrical cables. We use all, almost all this material. Why do they use? They have the iron, steel, brass, bronze, mercury. Make mercury, we use like the thermostat in our phone, in our room to adjust the temperature. Inside the thermostat, we use the mercury to use as a conduct. The movement of negative and positive charges in conductors are as shown below. You see, this is a conduct. If, you, if we connect to a battery or power source, like this one, the positive will go into this way. Then the electrons with negative will go into this way. We call this way, we call the current flow, flow. We call this direction, we call electrons flow. Like this. This is the power, the bulb is on. Actually, this is the battery, and this is the cable. We use the conduct made of the cable, or wires. Wires, this is the conduct. So that's why from the battery connect to the power and go back to the battery to make the close the, the roof, then the power they can pass through the bubble, the bubble can be on. Here are a few common examples of insulators. The glass, the rubber, oil, asphalt, fiberglass, porcelain, ceramic, cloth, and the cotton paper is dry, cotton dry paper, dry wood, plastic, air, diamond, pure water. This is the glass, we always use the glass, rubber, oil, like the high voltage equipment, we always use the oil, put the contact inside here, they, they have two purposes. One is to in, uh, re reduce the heat, reduce the heat, the transfer the heat to the oil. The another one and then reduce the, the flash. So the oil insulation is always very good insulator. The fiberglass, porcelain, ceramic, quartz, and diamond. We use a lot of porcelain or ceramic used as a insulator in the high voltage. There is no flow in the circuit because the insulator is broken the circuit. This is the insulator. Inside the insulator, they have the terms. 
but they have no free electrons in between the atoms. So even you put the power on, and they have no electrons move through, flow from this way go to this way, just nothing happen. So even you put the power on like this, the bar was still not on because the insulate like here is means broke the circuit. They have no connection between the two point, between this point to this point. It must be understood that not all conductive materials have the same level of conductivity, and not all insulators are equally resistant to electrons moving motion. For instance, silver is the best conductor in the conductor's list, offering easy passage for electrons than any other material cited. We know this picture is showing a thick break. This is for the switch, like a switch in the high voltage. In here, if you open, open this contact, this thick is open. So this is the, when the switch close on to the this point, and this circuit is on. And this for, for this one is like a, this point. That's this point. When this put close, this circuit is on. So this path always made of silver. Why you use the silver? Because silver is very good conduct have conductivity. When these two points put together very close, if the voltage is higher, they will generate, generate the flash between the two points. Even the two points, if it's closed, you want to open, the current be before it flows through the two points. If we want to block, block the circuit, they, they will generate a flash between the two points. So the silver is very good conductivity. So when you open or close, they will reduce the flash. This one, you see like this silver, this two point, this. 30 watt and concrete are also listed as conductors, but those materials are substantially less conductive than any matter. We know when when we are the hands, if we are hands is weight, wash, when you wash your hands with, with water, you don't want to use a wet hand to touch any electric, electrical equipment because the water sometimes is good is a good conductor. This is a experiment is a, is a picture showing this glass container is a pool, pool water. Pool water means the insulator. When you put the power on, but they have no current flow because it's a pool water. But if you put some dirty equipment here, liquid here inside, then this change to conduct. Dirty water means conduct. So this power come from here, go through here, go to the bulb. The bulb is on. It should also be understood that some materials experience change in their electrical property and different condition, conditions. Glass is a very good insulate at room temperature, but becomes a conductor when heated to a very high temperature. So most people will know this is a electric pool. 
we can see always see on the street side they have a lot of electrical pole in the electrical pole this is an electrical cable with high voltage you have you have to insert the high voltage cable with the pole with the pole because in the on the street a lot of people will touch the pole so the for safety you have to insulate from the power this power cable with the pole so this is the glass insulate so the cable is on the top if it's on the top but here is no electrical flow here so this pole is for everybody's safety safety but when the glass heat up the solid glass change to liquid star liquid glass they change to from the insulator change to conduct if you connect to the power the power can pass through the glass gases as air normally insulating material also become conductive if heated to very high temperatures where the normal motion of free electrons in a conductor is random with no particular direction or speed electrons can be influenced to move in a coordinated fashion through a conductive material free electrons are in the space between atoms like this this free electrons are in the space so those the conductors this uniform motion of electrons is what we call electricity or electric current to be more precise it could be called dynamic electricity in contrast to static electricity which we already learned last the previous video which is an, an moving accumulation of electric charge Just like water flowing through the emptiness of a pipe, electrons can move within the empty space within and between the atoms of a conductor. This is the electricity, electrical, electric circle. If they have the battery, they will can use the fluid in this circuit is similar with the water pipe system like this this is a water pumper when the pump is working the water will go through this way go back to back cycle is similar with this the conductor may appear to be solid to our else but any material composed of atoms is mostly empty space. The liquid flow analogy is so fitting that the motion of electrons through a conductor is often referred, as, referred to as a flow. Each electron moves uniformly through a conductor it pushes on the one ahead of it such that all the electrons move together as a group the starting and stopping of electron flow through the lens of a conductive path is visually instantaneous from one end of a conductor to the other even though the motion of each electron may be very slow 
and prox approximate analogy is that of a tube filled end to end with marbles. This is a tube filled with marbles. The tube is full of marbles, just as a conduct is full of free electrons ready to be moved by an outside influence. If a single marble is suddenly inserted into this full tube on the left hand side, like this, another marble will immediately try to exit the tube on the right. Even though each bubble only traveled a short distance, the transfer of motion through the tube is virtually instantaneous from the left end to the right end, no matter how long the tube is. With electricity, the overall effect from one end of a conduct to the other happens at the speed of light. A swift 186,000 miles or equals 300,000 kilometers per second. Each individual electron so travels through the conduct at a much slower pace. If we want electrons to flow in a certain direction to a certain place, we must provide the proper path for them to move. Just as a plumber must install piping to get water to flow where he or she wants, to, wants it to flow. To facilitate this, Wires are made of highly conductive materials such as copper or aluminum in a wide variety of sizes. Remember that electrons can flow only when they have the opportunity to move in the space between the atoms of a material. This means that they can be an electrical current only where they exist a continuous path of conductive material providing a conduit for electrons to travel through. In the marble analogy, marbles can flow into the left hand side of the tube and consequently through the tube if and only if the tube is open on the right hand side for marbles to flow out. It means this end is open. You have to open this end. Like this. This marble comes in and this marble is going out. If the tube is blocked on the right hand side, the marbles will just pile up inside the tube and the marble flow will not occur. It means in the tube, in the right side, we block this tube. Even you move this marble onto the tube, but nothing happens in this side, like this. Nothing happened because this tube is, has been blocked. The same holds true for electric current. The continuous flow of elect electrons requires there be an unbroken path, the unbroken path to permit that flow. This other hypothetical electron source and destination. We call this electron source. This 
call the electron distillation. We can generate the flow from this, the source to the distillation. Now, with the electron source pushing new electrons into the wire on the left hand side, electron flow through the wire can occur. However, the flow will be interrupted if the conductive path formed by the wire is broken. Means before this is one wire, now it's broken to two wires. Since iron is an insulating material, and an air gap, gap separates the two pieces of wire, the once continuous path has now been broken, and the electrons cannot flow from source to destination. This is like cutting a water pipe in two and then capping off the broken ends of the pipe. What cannot flow if there is no exist out of the pipe? In electrical terms, we had a condition of electrical continuity. When the wire was in one piece, and now that continuity is broken, with the wire cut and separated. Like this, this before this pipe was connected together, but now this cap it, so they have no water flow through the, the, the pipe. If we, are, we were to take another piece of wire leading to the destination and simply make physical contact, contact with the wire leading to the source, we should once again have a continuous path for electrons to flow. If we put some wire from here, connect to this side, whatever, if you can put this way, anyway, just connect two points, then they have the closed rope here, so the power can flow this here to here to the destination, like this. This is analogous to putting a T, T fitting in one of the capped off pipes and directing water through a new segment of pipe to its destination, like this. This is the paper, you see. They go this way. The paper what flow is generated. You might have been wondering how electrons can continuously flow in a uniform direction through wires without the benefit of those hypothetical electron sources and distillations. For the source and distillation scheme to work, both would have to have an infinity capacity for electrons in order to sustain a continuous flow. Using the marble and the tube analogy, the marble source and the marble distillation buckets would have to be infinitely large to certain enough marble capacity for a flow of marbles to be sustained. The answer to this paradox is found in the concept of a circle, a never-ending roped pathway for electrons. If we take a wire or many wires joined end to end and loop it around so that it 
forms a continuous pathway, we have the means to support a uniform flow of electrons without having to resort to infinite source and destinations. Electrons can flow in a path without beginning and end, continue forever like this. This is similar like this, a marble Huna hop suck exactly the same like this. When this move on, this move on, this move on, this move on, continues. Each electron is advancing, advancing clockwise in this suck pushes on the one in front of it, which pushes on the one in front of it, and so on, just like a Huna hope filled with marbles. Now we have the compatibility of supporting a continuous flow of electrons indefinitely without the need for infinity electron supplies and dampers. It must be realized that the continuity is just as important in a circuit as it is in a straight piece of wire. Just as in the example with the straight piece of wire between the electron source and destination, any break in this circle will prevent electrons from flowing through it. So continuous electrons flow cannot occur anywhere in a broken circuit. In this circuit, if here it's broken, so the, con the electrons flow cannot generate. An important principle to realize here is that it doesn't matter where the break occurs. Any discontinuity, discontinuity in the circuit will prevent electron flow throughout the entire circuit unless there is a continuous and broken, and broken loop of conductive material for electrons to flow through. A sustained flow simply cannot be maintained. So continual electron flow cannot end anywhere in a broken circuit. Now you see broken this side, that's matter anyway, any way in this circuit. If any there's any one broken this continue cannot, this uh, electron flow cannot can, cannot be continued. So that's all for today's video. So let's renew the main point for this video. In conductive materials, the old electrons in each atom can easily come or go and are called free electrons. In insulating materials, the outer electrons are not so free to move. All met metals are electrically conductive. Dynamic electricity or electrical current is the uniform motion of ele electrons through a conductor. A circuit is an unbroken loop of conductive material that allows electrons to flow through continuously without beginning or end. If a circuit is broken, that means its conductive elements no longer form a complete path 
and continuous electron electron flow flow cannot be occur in it. The location of a brick in a circle is irrelevant to its inability to sustain continuous electron flow. Any brick anywhere in a circle prevents electron flow throughout the circuit. Thank you.